Welcome, to the Corp Vault channel. In this video we will discuss, standalone Microsoft SQL Server configuration for backup. Please, like, share, comment or suggest. Subscribe for more videos, and, you can follow us on Instagram. In this video, we will configure backups for, Microsoft SQL Agent installed on a standalone server. Expand the client computer on which SQL agent is installed. Please note, file system is the base agent, and on top of it you can install any other agent. Here you can see the agent type, and date when the agent was installed, or reinstalled, or upgraded. Expand SQL Server. You will see the SQL instance auto discovered. If not auto discover then you can add it manually, but most of the times it is auto discovered, as that option is by default enabled during agent install, unless otherwise someone disabled it during agent install. You can also view the SQL version from here. Expand or double click the instance. We see default sub client, you can create multiple sub clients as needed for various databases. Right click on default sub client. These are the available menu options. Sub client properties are default. General tab. Client name displays the name of the client computer. Agent displays the name of the agent installed. Instance displays the name of the instance to which this sub client belongs. Sub client name displays the default name, and this can be changed to a name of your choice. But do remember this is the default sub client. Allow multiple data readers for backup copy. This option specifies whether multiple data reads are allowed for a single Windows physical drive during backups on this sub client. This should be selected only for specialized hardware such as RAID, or possibly in the case of spanned volumes. Disable auto discovery. By default, when a new user database is created, it is automatically discovered and added to the sub client. Selecting this option will disable the auto discovery and pre assignment of SQL databases to this sub client or any other sub client manually created. Use the description field to enter a useful information like change ticket, incident ticket, cautionary notes, etc. When you create a new sub client, you see one more option sub client type. You can create four types of sub clients. Use these sub clients for backing up different types of databases based on their recovery models. Full recovery model sub client type is used to back up the databases where recovery model is set to full. Simple recovery model sub client type is used to back up the databases where recovery model is set to simple. System Databases Sub Client Type is used to back up the SQL Server system databases like Master, MSDB, and Model. None Sub Client Type is used to back up any database type. Once Sub Client created, by default, SQL databases are automatically discovered and assigned for these Sub Clients, unless disable the auto discovery option in the default Sub Client is enabled. In that case, you need to manually discover and add the database to respective sub client. Content tab. Database list displays the names of databases that are currently included in the content. Click configure to discover and add databases to the content. Database configuration window. Click discover. It will scan the SQL instance and lists all the databases configured under it. It also retrieves the recovery model of each database. You can select each database and assign it to the sub client. If needed, you can even mark a database to not backup. You can select all the databases and assign it to a sub client using option Change all selected databases to. As a backup admin, you should know the Microsoft SQL database recovery model, along with its pros and cons. Let's discuss a bit about each of the recovery model. It will be helpful while troubleshooting SQL backup issues. Ideally it is the SQL admin, who decides which user database should be in which recovery model. System databases come predefined. 
All SQL Server database backup and recovery operations are based on one of three available recovery models, that is, simple, full, and bulk logged. Let's discuss each one of it. The simple recovery model is the simplest among the available models. It supports full, differential, and file level backups. Transaction log backups are not supported. If a transaction log backup is scheduled for a database in simple recovery mode, then the transaction log backup gets converted into differential backup. Due to this, the backup time increase, and you might see transaction log backups running longer than expected. The transaction log backups are auto truncated during checkpoint operations. In full recovery model, all the transactions are fully recorded in the transaction log file. The log sequence is unbroken and is preserved for the database's restore operations. Unlike the simple recovery model, the transaction log file is not auto-truncated during checkpoint operations. Bulk logged is a special purpose database configuration option, and it works similar to full recovery model, except that certain bulk operations can be minimally logged. The transaction log file uses a technique known as minimal logging for bulk operations. The catch is that, it's not possible to restore specific point-in-time data. Let's continue with sub-client configuration. We associated all the databases to the sub-client. If you wish to not backup a particular database, select the database and associate it with do not backup. Once done click OK. If you wish to remove one or more items from the sub-client content, select the item and click, Delete. Backup Rules tab. The information below is important to understand, as the options helps to enable, or disable backup rules, used to convert backup jobs under certain circumstances to prevent failures. Convert, option is enabled by default, and it switches backup types is indicated under given circumstances. If this option is disabled or cleared, then, all backup jobs for master database will be converted to full backups. Backup jobs for MSDB and model will run as is. For any user-defined database, the system will fail the backup jobs, that fits these given circumstances. Log backups. Convert a log backup to full. If a log backup was performed using other software, indicates that the next backup should be run as a full backup. When a full or differential backup is performed outside of the system, for example, if SQL admin took a full, or differential, or log backup using SQL Management Studio, then the log chain is seen as broken to Convault. Therefore, it is recommended to run the full backup using Convault. Do not convert log backups to full. If log backup was performed using other software, indicates that the next backup should be run as a log backup. When using this option, Make sure to enable the Disable Log Consistency check in the SQL Settings tab, to ensure that the backup job completes successfully. If this option is not selected, the backup job will fail with the error, Backup chain is broken. File or file groups are added, is enabled by default, which means the next backup job is switched to a full backup. If this option is cleared, the selected backup type continues unchanged. Pre-Post Process tab Pre-Backup Process Enter a path of the process, to run before the backup phase. Please note, if there are spaces in the name and path, provide a string beginning with an opening quotation mark and ends with a closing quotation mark. Post Backup Process Enter a path of the process, to run after the backup phase. Do take care of the spaces by providing an opening quotation mark and ending with a closing quotation mark. Run post backup process for all attempts. Specifies whether this process will execute for all attempts to run the phase. Selecting this option will execute the post backup process even for situations where the job phase is interrupted, suspended, or fails. Run as Displays the user account used to run the pre-processes and post-processes. Select Change, if you want to add or modify the user account, that has permission to run the pre-post-processes. Storage Device tab. Data Storage Policy. Select a storage policy from the list to which backups will be associated. 
use data paths option to view or modify the data paths associated with the primary storage policy copy of the selected storage policy. This would help to route the data between data paths when you see issues with a particular data path. Incremental storage policy displays the name of the incremental storage policy. If the selected storage policy has the incremental storage policy option enabled, use create storage policy to launch the create a storage policy wizard for creating a new storage policy. Number of streams for data backup displays the number of streams used for backup operations. Change the number of streams as desired. The more the streams, the more the load on the SQL server. We recommend using one stream if backup data is less say about less than 1 terabyte, but it is up to you. Log Storage Policy tab Storage Policy Select a storage policy from the list to which transaction log backups will be associated. Number of streams for transaction log Displays the number of streams used for log backup operations. Change the number of streams as desired. As transaction log backups would not be large, we recommend using one stream to reduce load on the server. Data Transfer Option tab Software Compression Please read this statement carefully. You can enable software compression, on client, which we recommend. Or on media agent. Or use storage policy settings. Or turn it off. Please note, hardware compression has priority over the software compression. Software compression option will take effect when the data path is associated with a disk library, or when hardware compression is disabled in the data path associated with tape libraries. Resource tuning indicates the processes used by the client to transfer data and whether bandwidth throttling is enabled or not. Network agents specifies the number of data pipes or processes that the client uses to transfer data over a network. Increasing this value may provide better throughput, if the network and the network configuration in your environment can support it. The default value is 2, and a maximum of 4 can be set if necessary. Throttle networks bandwidth in MB per hour. By default this option is not selected, and therefore the throughput is not controlled. When selected, the backup throughput is controlled. You can specify a value for the throughput, by default. This is set to 500, the minimum value is 2 megabytes, and the maximum you can set is approximately 2 petabyte. Use this option, to set the backup throughput, based on the network's bandwidth in your environment. Use it to reduce the backup throughput, so that the entire network's bandwidth is not consumed, especially in slow links. Increasing this value will end up consuming the bandwidth. Please note, throttling is done on the network agent basis. Application read size, this option specifies the amount of application data that backup jobs will read for each unit transferred to the media agent. For SQL, the value is by default set to 2 megabytes, which ideally should be equal or greater than the value of maximum transfer size. Otherwise, the backups might fail. Just to let you know, this value may be increased to reduce the amount of data read from the given application, which in turn reduces the amount of I.O. operations performed against it. As a result, overall backup performance may increase. However, backup memory usage may also increase, which may inadvertently consume additional resources from the application. Therefore, set this value at either the default value, or match the block size directed by the application. Deduplication tab. Enable deduplication. Use this option to enable or disable deduplication for the sub client. If enabled, you can choose to generate the signature on the client or on the media agent computer. The deduplication is supported on disk storage devices. Therefore, the deduplication options are applicable only if the sub client is associated with a storage policy containing disk storage. Activity Control tab. By default, Enable Backup is checked. If you clear this option then backups will be started as per schedule, but a fail to start, with reason data management activity is disabled. When you clear this option, you get another option to enable backup after a delay. You can choose the option to select a specific date and time, 
when the backup activity can be enabled. Exclude from SLA and strike counts, when this option is selected, the client is excluded from the service level agreement, SLA calculation and the client strike calculation for the worldwide dashboard, ComSell dashboard, SLA report, and client strike count report. When this option is cleared, the client is included in these calculations. Encryption tab. By default, network and media, agent side, is selected, which means, data is encrypted before transmission, and is stored encrypted on the media. During restore operations, data is decrypted by the client. None, means no encryption will take place during backup operations. Media only, media agent side means raw data is transferred over the network, and then encrypted on the media agent prior to storage on media. Network only, agent encrypts, media agent decrypts. When selected, data is encrypted for transmission and then decrypted prior to storage on the media. During restore operations, data is encrypted by the media agent and then decrypted in the client. IntelliSnap Operations tab. Using these settings, you can take IntelliSnap backup with hardware snap engines. Please note, you can take only full and differential backups using IntelliSnap, you cannot perform log backups. Enable IntelliSnap backup for this sub-client. Warning says the next backup will be full backup, click OK to proceed. Available snap engines. Lists the available snapshot engine vendors. Select a snapshot engine vendor, from the list that is configured in your environment. Manage Array. Provides access the array management window, which helps you to add, or modify, access information for an array. Use Proxy. Select the proxy server that will be used, for performing the IntelliSnap backup operations. Use separate proxy for backup copy. You can select a different proxy that can be used to perform backup copy, that is. Copy of IntelliSnap backup to a different backend storage. Use source if proxy is unreachable. Which means, if the proxy client is unreachable, use the source computer, which is typically the client server, which will be used during snap backup of the job. Proxy for SQL integrity check. You can specify a proxy via which integrity check of a hardware snap can be performed during an IntelliSnap backup. Select the proxy server from the list. Name the SQL server name. You can also specify specific credentials that can be used to connect to the SQL server via the selected proxy. If you disable IntelliSnap backup for this sub-client, you receive a warning. Warning says the next backup will be full backup, click OK to proceed. Advanced Options tab. Block level backup operations. You can perform block level backup operation on SQL databases. After enabling block level backup operations on a sub client, all database backup operations that you run on this sub client are full backup operations. Transaction log backups still run as traditional virtual device interface (VDI) backups. We will discuss VDI in detail in some time. To enable block level. Select the Optimize for Table Level Restore checkbox. Once enabled, a message appears that tells you that the next backup will be converted to a full backup. Security tab. This window helps to identify the users, user groups, and roles associated with the sub-client. You can add, edit or remove security associations for the sub-client. Include inherited associations. Helps lists. All of the inherited security associations that affect the sub client. SQL settings tab. Block size specifies the block size that will be used during backup. The default block size for write operation is 64 kilobytes. To increase the block size, enter any value from 512 bytes to 64 kilobytes. Buffer count specifies the total number of buffers that will be used to receive data from SQL Server during backup. The default value of buffer count is 20. You can increase the buffer count if needed. Do note, buffer count should be equal, or greater than the number of streams. Maximum transfer size is the maximum amount of data transferred at a time.
during a backup operation. The default value is 204 kb You can enter any value from 64 kb to 4 MB. All data is transferred in multiples of 64 kb. Disable log consistency check. By default, log consistency check option is enabled, and the software will check for log consistency during backup. If detected that the backup chain is broken, the job will not proceed. Select this option to disable log consistency checking. When disabled, if the software detects that the chain is broken, the job will not fail but the database being backed up may not be restored later on. Once done, click OK. Subclient is configured successfully. Let's review the SQL instance options. These are the available menu options. Select Properties. Properties of SQL Server. General tab. Name of the client computer. IData agent installed on the server. SQL instance name. SQL version installed on the server. Server type. VDI timeout. VDI is virtual device interface. Let's discuss about VDI. It's important for you to know. VDI was introduced in SQL Server 7.0, and is supported and enhanced in later versions. VDI is SQL Server API, application programming interface, intended for use by third-party backup software vendors, like Convault, EMC Networker, NetBackup, etc. The virtual device interface provides the highest online backup throughput with minimal degradation to the transaction workload. It also provides fastest possible restore times. It enables third-party vendors to achieve the same performance characteristics as the SQL Server native backup or restore and makes the full range of backup or restore functionality available. VDI supports two types of backup technologies. Conventional online backups where the entire contents of the backup set is read, and transferred to the backup media. Snapshot backups using underlying split mirror, or copy on write technology. Conventional online backups done through VDI, can take advantage of the full range of features of backup, and restore in SQL Server. Snapshot backups are limited to full database, and file or file group backups only. However, Snapshot backups may be rolled forward with conventional database differential, file differential, and transaction log backups. SQL Server VDI backup and restore operations require SQL sysadmin privileges. Let's continue with the Convault configuration. Every backup application has its own VDI timeout set. In Convault the default VDI timeout value is 300. Ideally this should be enough, but in scenarios where the database is large, in terabytes, or the database is responding slow due to various reasons, you see the backup go pending with VDI timeout error. To avoid such scenarios, you can change the VDI timeout value to a large number, so the VDI connection does not timeout. We normally change it to 6 times 9, but you can change it as needed. Use VSS. As discussed before, SQL allows snapshot backups. Use the Microsoft Volume Shadow Copy service to create consistent point-in-time copies of data, in other words, shadow copies. When this option is selected, traditional full backups for all databases within the instance will be switched to VSS full backups. Accounts tab. Override higher levels settings. To override the account settings configured at the control panel, client group, and agent level for the selected instance. Use local system account. To use the Windows account configured to run the CVD service, by default, this is the local system account. This account is used by the system to perform all operations, including backup, restore and browse. Select Impersonate User to enter a username and password for the user that has permission to perform all operations, including backup, restore and browse. The account must have local administrator privileges, 
and be a member of the SQL sysadmin fixed server role for the instance. Once done, click OK. Let's review SQL Server Agent properties. These are the available menu options. Select Properties. SQL Server Properties. General tab. We have already discussed most of the options. You can disable auto discovery of instances on the server, which are automatically discovered every 24 hours, or whenever the CVD service is restarted. Once disabled you need to manually add the SQL instance to backup, once it is created on the SQL server. Staging location for restores. You can enter the staging location where the logs will be restored. SQL agent authentication. We discussed these options. Security tab. We discussed this window as well. Activity control tab. We discussed this before. Do note, disabling at this level will impact all the instances configured under this agent. Once done, click OK or Cancel. We will end this video here. In our next video we will discuss, SQL always on availability configuration. Do subscribe to our channel for more videos, if not already done so. Do subscribe for more videos.